How are we doing, ladies and gents? Now, for a lot of you guys, it's probably the first time you've seen me with the new Corona Cup. It's going to take some getting used to, but I think it had to be done. We're not here, though, to talk about haircuts. We're here to roll back the years. Now, about 20 years ago, when I was in the prime of my youth, and while a lot of you guys were out at nightclubs on a Friday or Saturday night, I was spending those weekend evenings sitting at home, moulding method feeders and chucking them in buckets of water to watch how they'd break down. Sad, I know, but it definitely helped me in those early days of method feeder fishing. And because a lot of you chaps have messaged me and I get a lot of comments on other videos, and I see comments on other people's videos as well, one of the biggest questions that I see is method feeder versus hybrid feeder. So what I wanted to do is go back in time, get the bucket out, we've upgraded this time to a tank, we've got a GoPro over the top as well so you guys can see the feeder breaking down, and chuck some feeders into some water and see how they react once they're in the swim. And hopefully, for me as well as you chaps, we can get our heads round why we use a method feeder and why we use a hybrid feeder. So let's talk about the feeders that we've got and that we're going to put against each other. First up, hybrid feeder. I think this is the mini. I don't think it's the smallest one. It's the next one up from the smallest one. It's about the same size as a 50 pence piece. It's 18 gram, and that's just a Guru hybrid feeder. And then I've got a 20 gram MIDI gripper feeder, both inline feeders, both sort of standard feeders that you'd see on a lot of anglers' rods if you, if you were to walk around a commercial fishery. Let me talk to you about the end tackle, although the end tackle is not really going to make a difference today. We've got a three inch hook length of 014, got a size 18 hook, and I've just put on there so we can see it break out of the ball. We've got a little washer on there, a little yellow washer. Pellet wise, now I think getting your pellets right is absolutely critical when you're fishing a method feeder. So I prepared these probably about an hour and a half ago, two hours ago. These are my standard method feeder or hybrid feeder pellets, and this is how I prepare them. So I use 50 50 mix of Dynamite Bait, Swim Stim, Amino Originals, and then I use the F1 pellets. You get a lovely sort of like golden colour when you mix the two together. The F1 pellets are a really spongy pellet as well, so it just helps, helps the feeder break down a little bit better. To soak the pellets, I put them in an EVA bowl, add just a little bit of water. You want to just see the water peeking through the pellets when you shake, when you shake the EVA bowl. Zip the, pellet, zip the bowl up, give it a really good shake so every pellet gets a load of water, and then just leave it for maybe an hour, hour and a half, probably the longer the better. I wouldn't want to do it overnight in the middle of summer, but in the winter, I'd be doing it the night before a match. And when you come to them after that long period of time, they'll be really, really soft, but spongy. And that's what you want. You want the pellets to actually break down once they're around a feeder. You don't want them to just sit there in a big ball. That's the pellets. Let me talk to you about the other little bits that I've got with me. I've got a method mold because I'm going to use that for, method feed, for the method feeder. I've got a stopwatch because we're going to, we're going to be as scientific as we possibly can with this little experiment and then i've got with me some kitchen scales they're not the most accurate in the world but they'll do increments of a gram and what i'm going to do is before i mold the feeder i'm just going to weigh the feeder because i want to see how much bait you can get around each each one of these feeders because obviously that makes a difference during the summer when you want to feed a little bit more bait into the swim so we'll start i think with the hybrid feeder because this is the one i've got set up it says 18 gram on it and it's weighing 19 gram, which is pretty good considering we've got a method feed on there and we've got a hook bait on there as well. So 19 gram, let's mold the feeder. Now, how I like to mold a hybrid feeder is I like to put some pellets in so it's level with the brim of the feeder and then squeeze down with my thumb. I'm not moulding that first layer rock hard, but they need to be pretty, pretty hard. And then just enough to cover the hook bait. Hybrid feeders for me are not a feeder for feeding loads of bait. They're there just to trap one, one fish. I don't want the, a big spread of bait. And I'm hoping that this little experiment proves the difference between the two feeders. So I've got my hybrid feeder there. And what we'll do is we'll just weigh him again. 
So just we'll just see how much bait you can actually get around that feeder. So now we're up to 25 grams, so that's six, gram, six grams of pellet that we've put around that feeder. Not a lot by the sounds of it, but we'll, um, we'll see what the metal feeder can do in a minute. So we're going to pop this in and then we'll start with the stopwatch. I don't expect a lot to happen with the hybrid feeder straight away. I expect the size of the feeder to protect the bait. I use a hybrid feeder on really long casts because it does protect the bait a lot better when it on impact with the water. So you can just see it ballooning up now. It's just starting to balloon up and we're sort of like looking at 15, 20 seconds now. And as I say, we're looking, for me, for a hybrid feeder, what I'm looking to achieve is a really tight parcel of bait. So a fish can come along, one mouthful, and he's picked up everything. I get the feeling that with a method feeder maybe, the spread of bait's a little bit bigger and a fish potentially could come in and it could pick up a lot of feed without picking up your whole bait. And obviously we're trying to set a, the ultimate trap here when we feed a fish in. So we're just coming up to a minute now. You can see it's just slowly breaking down. This pellet, the pellet that's broke off the side, but you can see the top, that top layer is really soft. And what you've got to imagine is that carp, in my experience, don't get turned on by a rock hard pile of bait. They get turned on by a really nice, soft pile of bait. This is probably my standard setup for maybe Boston, especially in the colder weather or just coming into the summer. So this is probably my standard setup and standard pellet mix for Boston. Obviously you're catching carp, skimmers, F1s there. It's a real mixture of fish. So you can hopefully just see the hook bait there. It's just rolled off the side. Something that's really important to know that even though you've placed your hook bait bang central on the feeder, it's so difficult to keep it in place. And so often it'll just roll off the side. So we're coming up to two minutes now, and I think that is about job done. Pellets are nice and soft, but you can see it's a quite a compact little pile of bait there. Okay, say we've got a fish that comes in, I think he's going to suck up all of that bait in maybe one, maximum two sucks. He's going to get your hook bait. You're going to hook him. Jobs, jobs are good. And a great way of fishing, in my opinion, when you don't want to feed a lot of bait and you're fishing maybe mugging fish on a feeder, you're casting around your swim. Next interesting thing to note, still a tiny bit of bait in the, in the feeder. That's how I like it. I, I like to reel in with a tiny bit left in the, in the feeder. That way I know that my hook bait out there was always next to some feed in some way. That's the hybrid feeder. Let's thread this line through the inline method feeder, the gripper feeder, and see the difference between the two feeders. Right then, ladies and gents, we've got the gripper feeder threaded up. He says 20, 20 gram on his base. We'll weigh him again. Twenty two grams that is. So let's see what he's like loaded up. Now when I'm loading a method feeder with a mold, I like to put just a little scattering of pellets in the mold. Lay my hook bait as central as I can get it in the mold and then add my pellets up to just the brim of the mold, maybe just a little bit over. Squeeze it in nice and hard. Just pop it out, and there you go, finished method. I'll just give it a, a little tiny squeeze just to make sure it's all nice and tight. And then we'll give it a, another way. 31 grams, that is. So we've gained an extra nine grams of pellets. So it's a, a, actually a third more bait than the hybrid feeder there. So that was only six grams. And let's see what the spread of bait looks like when we plop it in. Start the stopwatch. So I, I imagine that the method feeder is gonna break down far faster. The water can get to the bait a lot easier. There's no sides on the feeder protecting it. The hook bait's already been released. We're talking 20 seconds maybe and the hook Hook bait's already been released. You can see it's fell to the side. That's going to happen no matter what you do. Especially when you're using you know, reasonably strong line that's quite stiff. That's going to happen what you do. But I hope you can see already that the spread of bait, even though we're using quite a small method feeder, the spread of bait is far greater. 
So if a fish came in, maybe on the opposite side of the bait to where the hook bait is, he's got quite a lot of free bait there to pick up before he even sees the hook bait or even comes into contact with the hook bait. And whereas the hybrid feeder took maybe a minute and a foot, minute and forty, nearly two minutes to, to break down fully, we're at less than a minute now and the method feed is already broke down. So that tells us quite a lot about the feeders we ought to be using. When we're looking at catching a lot of fish and we want to be fishing fast, I'd say method feeder, we want to be putting lots of bait in, method feeder again, but then obviously when the fishing is a little bit harder, hybrid feeder, that's where that rules supreme. Interesting thing about these feeders is that it's got a plastic top and a lead base. I just think that sort of style feeder works better in shallow water because it writes itself a bit quicker. I'm always a little bit worried about the feeders that are all one piece of metal fishing in really shallow water. And I'm only talking sort of like 18 inch, two foot of water. I always think that those feeders have got a tendency to just maybe land the wrong way up. Whereas a plastic feeder with a lead base, it should land the right way up every single time. So I hope that's gone some way to answering the question of why use a method feeder or a hybrid feeder. I think what we might do is get the tank out for another video and maybe talk about ground baits because I think ground baits still got a real big part to play in method feeder work. And I think what I'd like to see is the different spread of bait and how quickly a method feeder breaks down when we're adding maybe a 50% ground bait to pellets or maybe 100% ground bait and different ground baits, maybe a different meal to expanders compared to different fish meals. I think that could be really interesting. I think that the ball and how tight that ball is and how fast it breaks down has a massive impact on your method feeder fishing. So until next time folks, stay safe.